The Afrikaner Weerstandsbeweging, meaning Afrikaner Resistance Movement, commonly known by its abbreviation AWB is a South African neo-Nazi separatist political and paramilitary organization, often described as a white supremacist group. Since its founding in 1973 by Eugene Terrablanche and six other far-right Afrikaners, it has been dedicated to secessionist Afrikaner nationalism and the creation of an independent Boer Afrikaner Republic or Volkstaat Borestaat in part of South Africa. During bilateral negotiations to end apartheid in the early 1990s, the organization terrorized and killed black South Africans. As of 2016, it is reported that the organization has around 5,000 members and uses social media for recruitment. Topic: History. On 7 July 1973 Eugene Terrablanche, a former police officer, called a meeting of several men in Heidelberg, Gauding, in the then Transvaal province of South Africa. He was disillusioned by what he thought were Prime Minister B.J. Vorster's liberal views of racial issues in the white minority country, after a period in which black majorities had ascended to power in many former colonies. Terrablanche also worried about what he characterized as communist influences in South African society. He decided to form a group with six other like-minded persons, which they named the Afrikaner Weerstandsbeweging Afrikaner Resistance Movement AWB, to promote Afrikaner nationalism. His associates elected him as head of the group, a position he held until he was killed on his farm in April 2010. Their objective was to establish an independent Borestat Boer state for Boer Afrikaner people only. It was to be independent of apartheid South Africa, which they considered too left-wing and liberal. The AWB was formed to try to regain the ground they thought lost after the Second Boer War. The men intended to re-establish the independent Boer republics of the past, the South African Republic and the Republic of the Orange Free State Orange Apartheid era During the 1970s and 1980s, the AWB attracted several thousand white South Africans as members. They opposed the reform of apartheid laws during the 1980s, harassing liberal politicians and holding large and often quite rowdy political rallies. Terrablanche used his flamboyant oratorial skills and forceful personality to win converts. He railed against the lifting of many so-called petty apartheid laws, such as the law banning interracial sex and marriage the Race Relations Act, mixing of the races Group Areas Act, as well as the government providing limited political rights to Indians and Colorids persons of African and European ancestry, mixed race individuals. During the state of emergency 1984 to 1986, AWB violence and murders of unarmed non-whites were reported. The AWB especially opposed the then-banned African National Congress ANC, which worked to achieve political rights for the indigenous native South Saharan Africans. The ruling National Party considered the AWB to be little more than a fringe group. The group operated relatively unhindered until 1986, when white police officers took the unprecedented step of using tear gas against the AWB when they disrupted a National Party rally. In 1988, the organization was estimated to have had support amongst 5 to 7 percent of the white South African population. In the Nick Broomfield documentary film, His Big White Self, 2006, he claimed the organization reached a peak of half a million supporters in its heyday. <laughs> During the end of apartheid During the negotiations that led to South Africa's first multiracial elections, the AWB engaged in violence and murder. During the Battle of Ventersdorp in August 1991, the AWB confronted police in front of the town hall where President F. W. de Klerk was speaking, and a number of people were killed or injured in the conflict. Later in the negotiations, the AWB stormed the Kempton Park World Trade Center where the negotiations were taking place, breaking through the glass front of the building with an armored car. The police guarding the center failed to prevent the invasion. The invaders then took over the main conference hall, threatening delegates and painting slogans on the walls, but left again after a short period. 
Six AWB members were sentenced to death for the murder of four black people at a fake roadblock they set up to terrorize black travelers. In 1988, the AWB was beset by scandal when claims that Tara Blanche had had an affair with journalist Yanni Allen surfaced. In July 1989, Cornelius Lottering, a member of a breakaway AWB group Ord Van Die Dude Order of the Dead, attempted to assassinate Allen by placing a bomb outside her Sandton apartment. Nick Broomfield's 1991 documentary The Leader, His Driver and the Driver's Wife claimed that Tara Blanche had sex with Alan, a claim she denied. This led to Alan taking libel proceedings against the documentary broadcaster Channel 4 in 1992 in the London High Court. During the trial, several transcripts of their alleged unconventional sexual positions appeared in the South African and British press. Tara Blanche also submitted a sworn statement to the London court denying that he had had an affair with Allen. Although the judge found that Channel Fa's allegations had not defamed Allen, he did not rule on whether or not there had been an affair. AWB members provided training to members of the Zulu Inkatha Freedom Party to help them defend themselves against the ANC and fight for a Zulu homeland. Topic: <laughs> Bofuthotswana coup. In 1994, before the advent of majority rule, the AWB gained international notoriety in its attempt to defend the dictatorial government of Lucas Mangope in the homeland of Bofuthotswana. The AWB, along with a contingent of about 90 Afrikaner Volksfront militiamen, entered the capital MMA Batho on 10 and of March. The black policemen and soldiers of the Bofuthotswana Defense Force who were out in force to support President Mangope disappeared from the streets in protest at the AWB's actions and later turned on the militiamen at the airport at Mafeking. One AWB member was shot and killed when the convoy attempted to leave the airport and continue on to MMA Batho. When in MMA Batho, the AWB and the Afrikaner Volksfront found themselves under continuous siege from both the Bofuthotswana Defense Force and MMA Batho citizens. When attempting to retreat from MMA Batho on the 11th of March, three AWB members were summarily executed by a Defense Force member who had gone over to the ANC after they had been wounded in a firefight. Nearby photojournalists and television news crews recorded the incident, which proved to be a public relations disaster for the AWB, demoralizing its white members. The AWB claimed that they were asked into the country and only entered trying to help the Bofuthotswana government, but the Tebet Commission found the "...evidence is overwhelming that they entered the area uninvited and that they were not welcome there." Post-apartheid On 17 June 2001 Tara Blanche was sentenced to six years in prison for assaulting a petrol station worker, John N. D. Zima, to such an extent as to cause permanent brain damage, and the attempted murder of a security guard and former employee, Paul Machabi. Tara Blanche was released in June 2004 after serving three years in Ruoigrand Prison near Mafeking. During his time in prison he became a born-again Christian and claimed he had moderated many of his more nationalist views and preached reconciliation as prescribed by God. In April 2007, AWB posters appeared at the 13th Klein Karoo National Arts Festival in Oatshorn. Several posters made reference to the Bach van Blerk song De La Rey, an Afrikaans hit record about the Boer General as well as to South Africa's former coat of arms. Organizers were quick to remove the posters. In March 2008, the AWB announced it was reactivating for populist reasons, citing the encouragement of the public. Reasons for the return include the electricity crisis, corruption across government departments, and rampant crime. Plans include a demand for land that they claim is legally theirs in terms of the Sand River Convention of 1852 and other historical treaties, through the International Court of Justice in The Hague if necessary, and if that failed, taking up arms. In April 2008, Tara Blanche was to be the speaker at several AWB rallies in Vreeburg, Middelburg and Pretoria. Several areas in South Africa have been earmarked as part of a future Volkstadt according to three critical title deeds. The areas include Vrijheid in KwaZulu-Natal, the Old Republics of Stelaland and Goshen in the far northwest and sections of the Free State. The Mail and Guardian newspaper reported in 2008 that the AWB group has over 5,000 members, and appeals to 18- to 35-year-olds to join the organization's youth wing. 
The South African press reported in 2016 that the AWB continued to use social media to recruit new members. In 2010, Tara Blanche was killed by an employee on his farm, and Steyn Van Ronge was announced as new leader of the organization. Leader Logo The AWB flag is composed of three black sevens forming a triskelion in a white circle upon a red background, resembling the flag of Nazi Germany. According to AWB, the sevens, the number of final victory, stand to oppose the number 666, the number of the Antichrist. Red is considered to represent Jesus' blood and the struggle of the Christians, while black stands for bravery. The inner white circle symbolizes the purity and eternal life. The AWB also uses the Veerkler, the original flag of the once independent South African Republic, and the flag of the Orange Free State. In fiction The organization is a popular antagonist amongst writers of alternate history literature. Several members of a fictionalized AWB are important characters in Harry Turtledove's American Civil War alternate history novel The Guns of the South. The AWB also features prominently in Larry Bond's novel of a Cold War era Civil War, international conflict in South Africa, Vortex. Topic. See also Don't touch me on my studio similar groups Afrikaner Volksfront Borestop Party Vereniging van Orgeworker Separatism Orania Volkstadt Documentary Films His Big White Self The Leader, His Driver and the Driver's Wife Louis Thoreau's Weird Weekends Episode 3. 3.